So there I was, coding away, figuring out how to make the Aegon Lights experimental tile map code work. It was fun, it was satisfying, the documentation made sense, I knew what to do. Okay, so I had to make a few scribbled notes, but it was pretty straightforward. And it even worked, and it worked pretty well really, with smooth full screen scrolling all handled by the hardware. No manky code of my own, it was pure magic. And then it hit me, I've no idea what I'm actually doing, like really. Let me explain, if you're one of those people who codes for fun, but somehow can't seem to stay focused long enough, or actually finish anything, cause yeah, me too, this might actually help you. Remember, your time is valuable, writing code is fun, wasting hours debugging badly designed nonsense is so demoralizing, it's why you quit. You can fix this though, it's not a skill issue, it's just applying an organization issue, but not an internal one, it's just that you don't have a process for planning. Nobody ever showed you one. This video was brought to you by my Patreons over on Patreon, and people like you who are just watching this video. The subscribe button's down below, as is my Patreon link if that's your thing. If not, the fact you clicked the video and you're still watching is much appreciated, so thanks for sticking around, let's get on with it. So I said I don't know what I'm doing, which might seem odd given I just showed you some working code. Well, if you've followed my game dev attempts for a while, you probably noticed a pattern, one common to solo devs that tackle big projects with loosely defined deadlines and a we'll figure it out in the future mindset. We're great at starting things, lots of enthusiasm, lots of what we're going to do. Kind of terrible at finishing them. Not so much, here's what I made. Anyone who writes software professionally can tell we've got no real plan, we're just sort of winging it as we go. I know what I want to build, and I can make the computer do it, but there's just no design. There's just like a to-do list at best, with no idea how all this stuff fits together. But how do you even design software to begin with? You see, if this was a case to house our computer, or the layout of the circuitry itself, we'd have CAD drawings and circuit diagrams. There's ways to do this kind of thing. Software isn't physical though. So what do we do? How do we plan this stuff? A cloaking device. And how exactly does it do that? Uh, if I'm being honest, I don't really remember. I was kind of in the moment. Did you record a work in progress log while you were jury rigging this up? What, you mean as the gone were tearing our ship apart? First rule of engineering is study. Write it down. There's a reason we track our work no matter what the circumstance and this, this right now, this is precisely the reason. And then we invented vibe coding. So yeah, although it's getting scarily good, isn't it? But anyway, that's not this video. That can be a different one. The magic phrase to search for in this situation is known as a software development methodology. And there's loads of them. Some are popular, some are a massive waste of time, others are a passing fad. If you write software for a living, which one do you use and does it actually work? I'm going for a sort of agile-ish style method to write in code. I'm going to split the work into small pieces, do each piece, review it, see if it's any good, come back later if I need to make it better. Always kind of forwards moving momentum. Still doesn't explain how I need to design the software and plan it out though. Well that's where we find this thing called UML, or Unified Modeling Language. And after using it for a while, I can tell you there's nothing unified about it. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. All it is, is a bunch of tools that can be used to make software designs. Equally, it's a bunch of tools that could be used to play an enterprise software developer and never get any actual work done. There's loads of different diagrams that you can create for different purposes. Everything from a high level brainstorming diagram to quite specific algorithm descriptions. This sounds interesting, especially to a nerdy brain that likes bits and pieces and things that fit together, but you've got to make sure it's not going to become an overkill. This isn't me blindly merging Agile and UML into some pointless solo ritual. I picked specific diagrams for a reason. The problem with diagrams, however, is drawing the things. You realise that you want your diagram to look nice, so you have to line things up, and sometimes the text doesn't fit in shapes. You've got to get a tool that doesn't involve any of that stuff. To completely eradicate all of that time-wasting hassle, I discovered a tool called Plant UML. 
you draw diagrams by writing markup in a text file. I'm a programmer. I like writing markup in text files. It's quick. It's how I work. So here's what I've done and how I've done it. And what I used to do as a comparison. The first stage of any project is to throw things at the wall and see what sticks. Mash down a bunch of ideas somewhere and generally figure out what's going on. I used to do this by writing notes. I still do this by writing notes. Handwritten notes seem to work best for me because I can doodle and organize the words on the page better. From this, I can now create a mind map. There's a specific diagram for this in UML and creating one is really easy. So I think I'll just start doing this anyway because look how easy this is to do. The way I make the mind map sort of gets me thinking about what groupings of functionality exist within the project. It's a very high level overview of the whole thing. This is like the main starting point. If you start by writing code and you've not done an overview, stop writing code, go do an overview, even if you think that you know it all in your head, it falls out eventually. And this leads neatly into creating component diagrams. Always make a list of the main components in your project because it forces you to think about what your design is made up from and it will get you thinking about how those parts fit together. Not what they do, but how do they work together to make a working system? Do they even fit together? Have you accidentally made a mess that is broken from the start and you'll just end up hacking to put back together? If you have, it's not a big deal because you can fix it. You've not yet written any code. It's all just words in a text file and it's very easy to change. It's all very sort of fluid and temporary. And you can keep refining this. You'll eventually get there. An unexpected side effect is that if the diagram looks complicated, it's probably wrong. So if you create a diagram and you look at it and you're like, well, what's all these lines and all these boxes and this is just too much text on a screen, you've probably done your design wrong. So that visual feedback is really helpful. After that, I move on to thinking about what classes exist because my brain is object oriented, but I code in C, which isn't. But object oriented programming is an attitude, not a language feature. You can do it in anything. Maybe I'll realize a class that I've designed is irrelevant and that the component I thought up doesn't even need to exist. All I do in that situation is go back to the list of components and fix it. The list of components from before becomes my to do list. I have to turn each one of those into something in the class diagram. And turning each component into a class or collection of classes helps me tick them off. It makes me think about them. So I take my components from before and now try to imagine how will they work? What functionality is needed inside each one? What data needs storing? How do I describe it? What will I name things? And like before, I'll get it wrong. I'll forget stuff or I'll misunderstand what I actually meant. I'll read my plan from before and not understand it, which means I have to go back and fix it. But this again isn't a big deal because it's just text and I can just change it again. At first it's a bit strange, it feels like wasted time. It took me quite a long time to overcome desire just to start coding because stuck in my brain was this thought that I'm just making a daft little game on a tiny 8-bit computer. Applying enterprise grade planning to it is a complete overkill and it's like what's the point? Well it turns out that that was the wrong kind of thinking, as we're about to discover. This next part can divide programmers a little bit because I'm going to mention techniques that might feel like pseudocode or the dreaded flowcharts. That old school 1960s idea that you must perfectly describe your software on paper before even touching a keyboard. But that's exactly what we're going to do. So step away from your language of choice and focus on describing the algorithms. What are the instructions? Not how do you represent them in your chosen language like C or whatever, where you're worrying about pointers and lists and whatever it is. Instead, what will the code do, no matter what language you are writing it in? The level of detail though is up to you. If you can code something in your sleep, just outline the key steps. You don't have to go into detail. There's no point, you know how to do it. But for the tricky parts that you're unsure about, the actual meat of the current thing you're writing, go all in and spell it out really clearly as if someone else is going to read it because that someone else is you in the future who won't remember the current state in your brain right now. If I can't explain it with clear sentences and a few diagrams, 
What chance do I have of writing it clearly in C? That's when I'm going to start off Googling stuff and asking AI to do thinking for me because I don't actually know what I'm doing. The diagrams might seem like a waste of time, but they're surprisingly powerful. When I started taking them seriously, I realized they forced me to step back and think like the developer using my code, not me writing it. More importantly, it helped me design a coherent system, not just a mismatched bag of parts hastily bolted together. What felt like a delay was actually a shortcut to better code and a clearer architecture. The next step, and what I'll be doing next time, is writing the actual code. And yes, I'll probably uncover some flaws in the design as I go. That's fine. At first, having both the design and the code can feel awkward, even redundant. It takes discipline to keep the diagrams updated when the code changes. But the payoff is worth it. The diagrams are the documentation. I've already done the hard part up front. No need to document everything after the fact. The worst my documentation is going to get is maybe some comments above each function to explain what it does. When I revisit this in a month, I won't need to dig through old files or try to remember what I was thinking. I won't have pages of like scribbled notes that I have to flick through and figure out what was going on in my brain. It'll all be right there, clear and visual. And when I want to also explain what I'm building, I can just show the diagrams and walk through them. So hopefully, this gets you thinking about how you design and build software. This is my example that I kind of mutated to fit me. So I'm not saying copy my approach, but if the idea that there are actual systems for planning software is new to you, go do some digging, do a bit of research. It'll help. Create a system that works for you. So this all sounds amazing. Like I've suddenly discovered some almighty secret knowledge that's gonna fix all my problems. Is this adoption of this enterprise grade level planning system going to magically make me a better programmer? No, not at all. Because we're not talking about programming. We're talking about designing and engineering a system. Is it going to make me a better software engineer though? Because previously I just hacked things together, hit a dead end and decided it all needed throwing away and rewriting and that that was just an iteration and it was fine to do that. It's going to make me better at that bit. If you're thinking this is an idea worth trying, I want you to bear that in mind too. It should take 10 minutes to make a mind map. Seriously, you bang ideas down, you're done. Maybe half an hour to make the first draft of a component diagram. Don't overthink it. You're going to fix it later. The classes shouldn't take more than an hour to get a basic idea laid down. After that, it's just an iterative process that gets progressively shorter as you understand what you're making better. I think as coders, we sometimes jump in with I'm going to make a 2D top-down game. I know what one of those is because I've played them. I just need a bunch of sprites, some collision detection, and a map. And then the rest will build itself over time. But we don't actually think how they all fit together. Now, this video is a little different from my usual updates. It's less about the progress of the game and more about how I'm learning how to work smarter and more efficiently. And after finishing the tile map code, I actually found myself unsure of what to do next. That's where this video came from. I literally write, wrote the code in about 20 minutes and then sat there and went, well, now what do I do with it? How do I connect that to the game? In fact, I don't yet have a game. I've just got this thing that makes a map. And that made me realize just how important it is to pause, plan, and like work out the bigger picture. Remember, feeling stuck or uncertain is part of the process. It's not a sign of failure. It took me a while to learn that if I'm stuck, it's not because I can't do the next thing. It's simply because I don't know what the next thing is. So hopefully it's useful. It's a bit like how I approach making these videos and work. I just used to make it up as I went. There was no script to these videos. I had a vague plan in my head of what to do. I'd turn the camera on and record stuff and edit it down. It used to take me seriously a month to edit a video. I don't mean make it like this bit. I mean, physically working in the editor took me a month. Now I have a plan and a process and I write a script and I list what goes in the script and I work out what to put on the screen at key points. It felt really weird at the first writing a script and reading it and it felt even weirder like organising what was going to go on the screen. It felt like I wasn't making a video by me, it felt like I was sort of doing it by committee. But now each video is a little bit more concise and it's easier to produce, except these ending bits where I tend to ramble. But you know, if you're still watching, Thanks for sticking to the end. 
and I'll see you in the next one where we're going to get a PC, we're going to fix it, and I'm going to make noises out of it, out of its printer pot. So I'll see you then.